Gladys Washington Cunningham. Yeah, yeah. I was born right here in Opelousa, October 5, 29. Okay, so you born 1929? Mm-hmm. I was the babysitter. Mm. I had to take care of the other little ones. Okay, in the community or in your family? Family. We were eight. Four and four. My mother had four and four. I had four and four. What number were you? Do you remember? Oh, God, I got the count. Uh, th th the third one. Uh, my mother was Felicia. Washington? Washington. And my daddy was James Ozumiwa Washington. I went to a lady in in a in the house because we lived in the country. Okay. And I was about six, seven years old when I started school at the public school. Mm, okay. And I, I went to the public school until I graduated from high school. Well, we had to walk to school while the, ch the white children rode the bus. Mm. That was outrageous. Mm. And you remember Butler? He the one spearheaded to get the bus for the b black children. Oh, okay. And his name was Butler. You remember his whole name? Yeah, Don Louis Butler. Don Louis Butler. So he got the buses for the black kids in Opelousas. He spearheaded the group. The group, okay. That fought for it. What grade was it? Seven, I think it was seven. Ah, okay. Do you remember when integration happened? Yeah, yeah, I remember. Were you still in school then? Yeah. Uh -huh. oh, okay. Were you in high school? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I was in high school. First, they put us with the white children. Okay. And that was murder. Mm. We just had a turmoil. It was a turmoil the whole session. That's, that session was a turmoil. And they closed school down. And then the, 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 the next year, we went back to school. It was kind of quiet. And from then on, they, they accepted it. I was young. And I just fell in love, that's all. Jerish mm -hmm. Cunningham. How long were you guys married? 52 years. When did you meet him? In school. What, seven, eighth grade? Yeah, I believe it was the eighth grade. Okay. He came back from the service. Mm. And enrolled at the same school where I was. Okay. And he attended class. At that time, soldiers could come back and go to school. And he came back and he went to school and that's where I met him at. My dad made me get out of school in order for him to come and see me. Mm -hmm. And I got out of school he must have did it about three months. Okay, and your dad didn't like that? No, my daddy was very fun. He didn't want me to be seeing that boy and going to school. Mm. Crazy. Yeah. But I got out. It was one guy in the class where, where I was that was my boyfriend. Okay. Real boyfriend. Okay. And 
my daddy didn't know about that. So I went to school and we talked and we, we had fun together. But when it came to that boy, I fell in love with him and that my daddy knew about that. And that's when he made that decision. That boy would walk me back home from school every day. That's how he found out. Mm. No, 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 no. I, I didn't know about the house. Okay. I wasn't but six, 17 years old. Mm. Well, um, what, what did you do when you dropped out? Of, when would you stop going to school? Babysit. Mm. That's how you made your income. Mm-hmm. Okay. So did you did you start babysitting because you liked it or because you had to? I I was a child myself. And I I didn't like it but I had to do it. I did it and I come to like it and it grew on me. So at what point did you go back to school? After I married I got married after about three months, th three or four months. We got married, May 11, 1947. That was my wedding day. And from then, I moved with my in-laws. And I lived with them about two years. During that time, my husband was going to veteran school. You know, they had school for veterans. And he enrolled in the class. And he was, that's why he was going. He was going to school and I was going to school. I was going to the high school. And he was going to the veteran school. And he went to school nine months. And I got pregnant for my first child at the end of nine months. He was paying $90 a month to the veteran that didn't have no children. And I took the liberty to buy a lot out of that nine months. I paid the lot $100 and I paid $10 a month until I finished. When I finished, my daddy went with me and we went to the lumber yard and made a deal to, to put up a, a, a little four-room house. And during that time, I had my first girl. and we moved in that little house. And we stayed there until we had four or five children and we moved into a bigger house. Is that this house right here? This house. I had two semesters left. I went to school and took the subjects for those two walked to school every day. And I graduated from high school. And then I, I went to Southern. Mm -hmm. I didn't experience on campus at Southern. They had classes that would come to the people in the community. And I, I, I enrolled in those classes. And that's how I got my degree. So you didn't have to go to Baton Rouge at all? No. Oh. Uh, once or twice, the classes were scheduled there, and I'd go take a ride with some of the girls, and we all go out there together. And the balance of the time, I went to the classes in the community. What was, what was the biggest challenge for you as a parent? My oldest boy went to the service. Why was that challenging for you? 
Well, he had never left home. But he went to the service. And then, then the second one went. It was a challenge. I had my third boy. My third boy. Came up with a, you know, he had this thoughts. Uh, uh, mental illness. Yeah, yeah, mental illness. And we worked with him, and I went with him, oh, several times to uh, to Alexandria to the police in Alexandria, oh, three or four times. We to places around here with to the doctors and everything, but nobody could reach his illness. And we just did that until he he died. What led you to open the daycare? I, I was looking at the mothers who was trying to work and trying to find care for their child. Things was tight, and mothers was going to work, but they had no place to lead the children. And that was my idea of opening a daycare. The director of public housing give me two of the units, one down here and one on the hill, to open a daycare. Just give me the units. Now I had to find a way to open, to get it set up. Okay. And I waked myself to death, but I got it set up. And my, my son-in-law helped me build some of the furniture to put in there. And I set up a workshop, and we made puzzles and things like that. And I had people from Washington D.C. to come just to look at the 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 the, the way we went about it. And we operated those centers for 28 years. I I, I even took pictures of the children every year as they were growing up wow. and sent them home to the parents. We had a good time. That's what brought me to the school board to, to be on, on that body because I had done such a good job with the daycare center. Everything that we, we, we used in the daycare center, we had no money to buy it. We had to make it and we made it. I was the first black woman to be elected to the school board. How did you get and maintain the respect of the people that you, you worked with? Or... Oh, uh, I just got into it and let them know that I'm the director. From that workshop, it just went on because they know I meant what I say. Did you experience any any roadblocks or any? Oh, Lord. <laughs> <laughs> I had many roadblocks. I stayed with housing daycare that whole time. I made decisions on my own and I give them the best that I hate. The full black 
men the challengers. So. Mm. The four black you men? You make the, the business of the house and authority. They raise all kind of hell with me. And even the director. I, I, I managed that building over there. And he, he come got the book took the books, he was going to run it. I didn't tell him nothing. I didn't tell him a word. He took the books and looked at them and everything, and then he took it and said, I'm going to run it. I didn't say a word. After he left, I sat at my desk, and I drew up a very fierce letter telling the people in Washington. What the director of public housing is doing to me and I'm doing all I can for, for the children. And then doing all I can for the, the community with the building. I don't know what he want. The next two weeks, the man came to my office and said, yeah, you know your keys. He had then got in touch with him. Okay. I ain't gonna fuss with you. Mm -hmm. I just wrote a letter. To the people who, who got the power to do it. That's the right. <laughs> That's okay. what I did. What's your secret for a long life? <laughs> oh my God. I thank God for it. I didn't drink, I didn't smoke. I eat good meals, vegetables, and meat and rice. I eat fruit. All of that helped me to live a long life. I took care of my body. That was the main thing. When I had a cold, I had a remedy that I had for me to get rid of. And I, I, I never was sick, just real sick, until I was in my bending years. Never was sick. And I thank God for it. What's your advice to uh, your children and your grandchildren? My children, I would tell them to look after their children more carefully. Those children cannot take care of themselves. They can't do it. The grandchildren take after the mother. The grandchildren gonna follow in the mother's footsteps.